Hey. Hi, Socrates Otto. Jail Welcome. Welcome to our second interrogation room for season five of Wentworth. Thanks for having me. We're so excited to have you. What about, can everyone, look, look Socks has already got guns out. Check them out. Look, the guns are back, guys. These are the guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, um, let's start with where everyone is just wanting us to start and yeah. unpack episode yeah. two. Because let's get that out of the way. Let's talk about it. Um, let's start from the very beginning. Frankie's back in the teal. Yeah, she is. She looks wow. so good on the outside, though. Do you know? I think the most pressing question really is just what kind of wardrobe is she going to rock this season? <laughs> you know, will she will she revisit the shorts from season one? That's the pressing question, really. Exactly. Well, she loved the Bond attire. Well, no one looked better in teal than Frankie Doyle. No. So, you know. But her Bonds is out. But it is a shame that she's back in jail. I really, really enjoyed watching her on, on the outside. It's, yeah. You know, such progression a, in the character. It's a, and it was a, you know, it was a really, um, you know, it was a really heartfelt episode in the sense where she's like, this is not my, this is not where I belong anymore. Mm. This is not my world. Yeah, this is not where totally. I want to be. And then we saw at the end where she just basically succumbed to it and was like, this is, well, I, I don't really have it. This is it. Mm. This is what I've got well, to do. Well, even last season as well, seeing on the outside and how she dealt with um, shame and, you know, um, it was amazing, you know, to see it, see her, her life crumble like it has. It's it's really It just spiraled out of control so quickly. Like, I think viewers will, you know, will relate where you're just screaming at the screen, like, no. tell someone, oh, my God, yeah. no, ne next bit of evidence, that bit yeah. of evidence, oh, now she's screwing up this stuff with Bridget. Like, it was just and one no, compounding thing after No doubt that will continue throughout this season to see how she uh, manages her time back in Teal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway... And then let's talk about, like, wow, we've had way too many goodbye scenes, and I'm sure, and I know when my fans agree. So we've said goodbye to B, and then today... Still saying goodbye to B. We're still saying goodbye to B. Yeah. But then today the girls had to say goodbye to Maxie. Yeah. And Maxie had to say goodbye to Boomer. Mm -hmm. And talk us through those scenes, because I guess also, too, you know, it's not just it's goodbye to characters, it's also goodbye... To, to, for, for the actual you, the actual cast members that are, that are working in these roles and things could, as well. So talk mm, us through that. Totally. I mean, I, there has been a lot of goodbyes, a lot of goodbyes in the last year or so. A few of those have come back to say hello, like Maxine being back for season five or the two episodes. But how do you say goodbye to Boomer and B? I I mean, both of those characters and those women were linked with me for the last four seasons. And both... Danielle and Katrina gave their all, and I think that's why our scenes and our storylines resonated so much. So very, very difficult to, to say goodbye to that. But yes, Wentworth as a whole, do you know, it's, um, it's left such a big gap in my world, you know, and also um, it, it really deeply affected me because I played such a rare and significant creature like Maxine Conway. How do you say goodbye to someone who taught you so much, you know, and also the fans? Who, who just embrace this show and have such an undying love for Wentworth. Saying goodbye to them as well, you know. But, you know, a roller coaster ride. But at the same time, I wish the success of the show to continue. I've no doubt it will, you know, for a, another couple of seasons. And I only hope that it keeps pushing stereotypes and, you know, representing real people and real issues. Yeah. Well, just much about Maxine has had some tough storylines. Um, just a few. Just a few. <laughs> and, and that's just even just walking in and in, in playing a, you know, a transgender character in, in, she, in the environment in which she's in. Well, she's about to do that again. Yeah. Right? That's, but le looking less like less, a woman. Less, exactly. Know. And then you've got the complexity of a transgender woman going through breast cancer, which is, it is in itself a complex issue and not one that I think that I can even recall that's been depicted on any other series or even in a movie or, or, or television. Yeah. Um, how do you want to tell fans? This is a question that comes up a lot about your approach to, to tackling Maxi and the research and, and sort of what you do to develop the role because you do play with such authenticity. Well, I had no choice, Kel, to delve deeply into the other gender psyche from the word go. I know that if I didn't, then the show and I would get into a lot of trouble, you know. So I made sure that I connected to Maxine as much as possible on set and remained in character, specifically in season four because of that storyline with the breast cancer. Um, but also 
to naturally fit into that woman's club and not have the rest of the cast kind of go, oh, it sucks. You know, a lot of them actually treated me like Maxine, which was which was essential for me to actually remain as authentic as possible. It was hard not to take her home, actually, you know, across the seasons. Mm. Yeah. And and what about in the sense, in sense of um, tackle, well, we said we tackle some really big issues, but this last storyline around breast cancer. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have reached out to you, and it's not because Maxine's a transgender character, but because their mom or their sister or their grandmother or themselves have gone through breast cancer themselves, and mm. they felt that very relatable to the journey that Maxine was going through. Mm. Totally, totally, all over the world. I mean, a lot of people, the complexity of Maxine being trans and having breast cancer illuminated a lot of people that those things can coexist, you know, and not many people did know that. Um, so to tackle something that I, don't, I agree with you, and I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it, replicated in, in um, television or film before is just goes to show that Went Wentworth is not afraid to tackle these issues. So no. It's wonderful that we created that conversation across the world, you know, and, and not just people that um, were going through cancer um, or were transitioning, but the general population, you know, were illuminated and they've started a conversation as well, which is everything that we want to do. do. You know? yeah, it's amazing. Mm. Um, and you and I talked about this offline in in this episode for Maxine, and there being a sense of, what, rather that there's not actual words, or there's no spoken word, mm. but there being a sense where you see that Maxine is obviously going through cancer treatment, which is in itself a, a massive feat. But then you Yeah, also, she's not looking too well. No, she's she? not looking great. And then mm. she's grieving um, this, grieving B, grieving the person that welcomed her first, yeah. the person that she felt that she should have been there for. And I think that there's that little sense of guilt that she, she wasn't strong she enough. She does feel responsible also because she was on the phone saying to B, the doctors told me there's, there's, there's no hope for, for Ali. Yeah. And she translated that information. So and she definitely feels guilty, responsible. And she's got an inkling, hang on, I told B this and B had nothing else to live for. So perhaps B sacrificed herself. And that's there in the subconscious, yeah. you know. Well, and, and, you know, yeah. conscious. And I guess that's the thing too, is mm -hmm. that you sort of see this shift. And like I said, it's not a verbal shift. It's just a, an understanding in where Maxine's like, you know what, I need to like self-preservation right now. I'm going through cancer treatment. I am mourning B. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Frankie comes back in and, 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 and Maxine kind of goes, okay, boom is good. Well, there, there are a few subtleties there that I tried to play where um, I notice Boomer, look at, look at Frankie, and she feels a kinship, she feels a bit of safety, and, and um, Maxine felt better knowing that, that Boomer now has someone else to, to take care of her. But also, yeah, definitely play, uh, uh, seeing Pam do what she did last week in that... <laughs> <laughs> in that the yard, fighting. totally freaked us all out. Now, genuinely, I had a response going, I should not be here. You know, this is dangerous for me. I felt very, very um, frightened seeing this lunatic, you know, and I was just gathering everything I could to justify Maxine going off to Barnes by saying she needs to actually, yes. Yeah, she needs to go get better and get stronger so she can look beat after this. Herself. Do you know? Yeah. And, and I, I hope that, you know, to that audiences felt that same sense and could see that because I think that it is where it, it, the storyline does follow through and Maxine does need to have self-preservation and mm -hmm. I guess it rings true to everybody at some certain time where you need to all of a sudden pull up stumps and go, you know, for me to be able to be there for other people and spoil people, I need to preserve myself. Well, they taught her that, didn't they? Be in Boomer, yeah. especially, especially taught her that. You're, you're worth more than, yeah. than you think you are. So, you know, your life is worth more. Your humanity is worth more than your gender. Yeah. So all those things are, are boiling over, and she's kind of going, maybe I need, I do need to actually beat this on my yeah. own terms, and you know, come back and. But in saying that, friends. I think everyone was reaching for the Kleenex. No one wanted to see that last scene, Boomer, and then Maxi trying to hold it together as she's walking out. With yeah. Well, smiles. I wanted, I wanted to make sure I left the girls with that image because they. Embrace Maxine from the word go, and that's all I could give them was a woman leaving with dignity and with a yeah. smile on her face saying she's okay. Little did they know that I turned around the corner and just lost, lost it. it. But good old Miles was there to give me a oh, hug. Although she, she didn't Miles. give me a hug. Mind you, if I paid her a couple of hundred bucks, she would have given me a <laughs> smile. Oh, we love smiles. All right, okay. Let's <laughs> hey, have, Jackie. I feel like, hi, Jackie. I feel like we've unpacked it. Did we unpack it? We've unpacked the episode. 
Um, let's move on and talk about socks because this is where. Let's talk about socks, baby. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Um, I should okay. have been singing. You can, you can sing. You can. That's that's the um. What's it called? Like on radio where you have a. I shouldn't sing. A, um, People know that. A lead-in thing. Okay, let's talk exciting news. Logies. Yes. Brilliant. Wentworth nominated for two, two. and Nick and Dan are also nominated. Yes. Popular and outstanding. I think that's the first time. How exciting! Possibly. Yes. On the back of the actual win, so fingers crossed. I know, and I was That's saying great. to Nick last and week. And Nick and Dan, absolutely. Last week, like just for audiences at home, to realise how tough it is for a pay TV, a subscription TV oh, yes. show to be nominated against, you know, against it's all the free to air stuff. Three or four years running now, yeah. Yeah. But in the popular category, you mean? In any category. Well, specifically, specifically popular. Specifically popular, yeah. 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 Amazing. But it's a huge feat. Um, well, it was a massive that season. Subscription TV doesn't have as many as many viewers as, as free to air does. And that just goes to show the mass, the mass popularity of this show, yeah. and and that it's just really leading Australian drama at the moment. Totally. So it'd let's be, win. It'll be a great win. night. It is a great, night. Be a great night. Um, I can't come. wait to see. I haven't seen them for a while, so it'd be good to just to get all the crew together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you're going to come and talk to to me on the red carpet. Yeah, it'll it'll be, be nice. Well, we won't have that sign, will we? Well, <laughs> you're being interrogated right now, Sons. <laughs> I may interrogate you on the red carpet. Why am I having so much well. fun? <laughs> <laughs> I may interrogate you on the red carpet as well. I, okay. I haven't decided. No. Um, let's talk about, because you love your fans, you love the Wentworth fans, let's talk about the Wentworth fandom and the success of the show. Mm -hmm. Did you, like, or did anyone ever actually think it could become this big? Look, you always hope it would, but I think this has gone out of the ballpark. I was living in America when the role came to me, and I, I believed it had the potential to be as groundbreaking as it was. Not only because of stories, not only because of the characters, but I think it's because it gathered together in such an eclectic number of a group of actors that reflected everyday people. Um, uh, and I think, I think that's, you know, that's a, that, I, I just hope it carries on that way, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah, the fans have been yeah, incredible, right. incredible in that response. They're you know? just amazing. Yeah. They're just one of the most dedicated, passionate, loyal, hilarious no, um, the best. fandoms I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. I've, people, people coming from, especially them saying that they've, uh, all over the globe, they haven't, they don't know each other, but they're connecting. And they're travelling to all these conventions and meeting each other for the first time and helping each other through whatever. You know, they recognise themselves in these characters. People that suffer in silence or suffer alone have finally found a voice in these characters. And I think that's a testimony of the success and why the, the Wentworth fandom is kind of going, oh my God, I want to hang on to this show and hang on to these characters because mm -hmm. I feel less alone, you know, in what I'm dealing with. I think that's the magic of Wentworth. And that's what I mean by I, I love the fact that it's... It, it's it's done what other shows haven't, you know, for a homegrown drama, homegrown drama. Yeah, you know, and that that actually leads me into my next question. I'm wondering if you've actually read my interrogation notes. Um, I want to talk about, and we've talked about this loads. Talked about last year. Notes? This is my interrogation. This is my interrogation notes. Have I read them? Yeah, because it's it's like a segue into the next thing I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I feel like you've been cheating, right? Um, because we've chatted about this a lot. Yeah. Um, about the profound impact that the show and the storylines and Maxine as a character um, have on issues surrounding equality, um, domestic violence, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, and mm -hmm. all of these, uh, I guess, tabooed subjects that um, are not readily delved into to the, to the, how do I describe it, to the level or to the vulnerability of what, the way we tackle these storylines in, mm -hmm. in Wentworth. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the response that you've had, because I know we've talked about this and you've had quite a lot of people reach out to you mm -hmm. about those times. Do you want to chat? Well, I've been lucky enough to travel across the, road, uh, the world and meet people as well who've come to me and said, you know, uh, parents and children have, have come together because of not only the show, uh, but, sorry, not only Maxine's story, but the show, it's brought them together. Um, and, and again, it's, uh, it, it, it's a good segue because, you know, people... people have said you've helped me through my transitioning you know um you're representing this character the way i feel and it's not stereotyped and you've finally given me a voice i'm uh, uh i've got my father or my sister or my brother dealing with cancer and i don't know how to um uh um to grieve 
but you know I'm grieving by seeing Boomer and I'm seeing B and I'm seeing you grieve and it's bringing me together. It's also teaching me that you know a trans woman can have this type of cancer. Uh, and, and that that floors me, you know. It shouldn't, but it does because we're we're communicating, you know, all across the uh, all across the world constantly. Um, and it sh we should, you know, we should continue. To, we should be doing a lot more of this. Yeah. In, 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 um, well, it's it's relatable media, characters, you know? you know. It's 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 those tough 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 subjects, and including those, you know, in difference which is with domestic violence and anxiety and depression and and drug use and those sort of mm. things. There are a lot of things that are obviously compounded in, in the walls of the prison, but there are a lot of the reasons too why the women are there in the first place. I take away the incarceration. Do you know? You yeah. can take away the incarceration. The, 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 the show would still be successful because we're seeing ourselves reflected, you know? Yeah. We're seeing ourselves reflect the same issues. How do we how do we deal with them? You know, we're so... You know, people, like I said, people that suffer in silence or are ostracised to talk about these issues, and yet we're seeing these people... You know, in whatever light, go through them on screen, and we're feeling less lonely. We're feeling a lot more confident. To actually, kind of go, well, I can talk about this. Yeah. You know, and heal, or have a conversation. Like I said earlier, we're, that's what we're done. We're having the conversation. Things are breaking down. If I can go back to to Maxine, what's interesting is that she's um, uh, in in terms of now recognizing herself as a human being first and a woman second. I'm interested to see what would happen to her when she goes off to Barnhurst and, and the whole idea of where, or how she identifies herself in terms of the gender. It's, got, it's almost genderless now because she's not appropriating the feminine uh, physicality. Yeah. And that's so prominent right now. More and more people through, through the start of the series, uh, for me especially, who, who, who started to sort of talk about transgender issues, are now talking about gender issues and genderless. I don't, I don't identify with a man as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I'm a genderless person. So that, for me, was pretty interesting in these episodes yeah. as well to kind of think just where Maxine's story could go. Where is she? You know, yeah. the aftermath of B, the cancer. Um, she still wants to be a mother, you know, and so there's an unresolved thing with Boomer and the baby, but also just where her gender and just how she... She will um, identify herself. So, you know, I think there's a lot more to be had with Maxie that, you know, off she goes to Barnes. I, I know she'll probably spend a lot of her time thinking about how she can get more sperm to, to Booms. <laughs> Aww, poor Booms. This book's run dry. Mm. That's my favourite line from last season. Um, but, you know what, you've taken that and you've taken all of, all of these things that we just spoke about and you've also been working on working with a with a with a not for profit um around these issues in the world do you want to because i saw the reason why i bring it up is i saw this cool thing that you and dan did the other week on social and i think that a lot of the fans have seen it too so yes. do you want to talk it's called laugh hard top 10 night is an organization run by the wonderful alistair and he's um he works with suicide prevention australia so he, he organizes all these non-profit um uh, th uh, uh all the money goes to suicide prevention so he doesn't make anything from it um, and that's to reduce the stigma around suicide and mental illness. So we hold all these events throughout the year. I'm going to do a lot more work for them. I'm an, I'm, I'm an ambassador. That's, that's, that's really hard to say. Tricky I sort of alliteration. Um, I am an ambassador for Top 10 Nine. I will be working with suicide prevention a lot more. Um, and we raised about seven grand last uh, Saturday. Yeah, that looks And there fun. were a lot of Wentworth fans that came along and said they actually haven't gone left their homes for about all a month to two months or felt, you know, a few people that, that came out of um, um, hospitals uh, for the first time and they just felt they were all inclusive. They felt like they were with friends and they were, it was much more, in, <laughs> that makes sense. Inclusive. It felt like yeah. an inclusive um, night because they finally got to share, you know, and talk yeah. about um, mental illness. Feel safe in that vulnerability. Totally, and that's yeah. exactly what Alistair's trying to do. So, you know, I... I totally held that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Very cool. That. Everyone can check it out on on, on Dan Dan or Socks Instagram. Yeah. Top ten night. Yeah. Absolutely. Very very mm. cool. And I know a lot of the fans have been supporting it as well. Mm. I've, I've seen it across the social media as well. Yeah. Um. Let's get to some other cool questions. Like I'm going to bring the mood back up a little bit. Um. What is your all time favorite scene that you filmed on Wentworth? What is my all time favorite? That's so tricky. So tricky. But I would. I couldn't, I can't pass the good old steam press. I mean, to say that I was top dog, even for a day. <laughs> You've got to stand behind the Pretty steam amazing, press. pretty amazing. And also to be, you know, to follow up with having all the inmates give me their dessert. 
I mean, that's literally <laughs> the icing, right? <laughs> so that kind of that yeah. But kind of Maxie thing. was so depressed about fucking up that she didn't enjoy the desserts. So didn't Booms eat them? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. They're, they're I'm pretty sure it's going to Yeah, yeah. From... I'm pretty sure she was like, this. I've fucked up. True. So stressed. And Boom's like, you're going to eat that? <laughs> yeah, if, if Maxie ate it, she'd probably all come up anyway. Yeah. But, but that that uh, sequence was, was pretty stunning was cool. to film. And um, <laughs> let's share a guilty pleasure because we were talking about it. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, you're going to. What TV series do you secretly love to binge on? Say it. <laughs> Say it. Well, I'm a big fan of Melissa DeCoutis, okay, and um, who most people uh, may know from The Real Housewives, but also back in the 80s, because I'm an 80s kid, although she was early 90s, she did um, Read My Lips and Sexy is the Word, and she was on East Street, but anyway, Real Housewives of Sydney. So you bit, heard it here first, guys. I'm a bit hooked on that show. What do you love most about it? Is the drama? Is it the authenticity of the storyline? I'm just kind of fascinated by <laughs> by the conversations the ladies have, and um, I think Melissa is very funny. I mean, when she has her um, talk to camera, the things you come, her reactions are priceless. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what do you think of Lisa? <laughs> Lisa's well, I didn't know much. I don't didn't know much about them before the. Um, I knew about Melissa, but I didn't know much about them before I saw The Housewives. So I'm learning a lot about them. I didn't know she was Mrs. Uh, Oldfield. Mrs. Oldfield? Um, she's got a lot of chutzpah too. Yeah. Bringing up that word again, yeah. If you think about it, imagine putting all seven of them in Wentworth Prison. <laughs> Who it's would last? almost the same. Oh, it is a little bit, isn't it? Oh They're pretty goodness. feisty. Take away the sparkly dresses and the eight-carat diamond rings. We've had a few shoves as well. <laughs> We've had some right. shouts. And I hear the reunion episode is a firecracker. So I can't wait for that. <laughs> Heard here first, guys. Socks is... Well, you can understand. I've been around women for so long in that jail. You know? <laughs> same, same. Same, same, but different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's play a game. It's game time. Okay. All right. Here's your little paddle. Ready? I'm going to slide it across to you because I can't touch Where's you. Where's the ping pong ball? There is no ping pong ball. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we're going to play Innocent or Guilty with Socrates Otto. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Have you ever been in a fight? I would say innocent. Verbally, yeah, but physically, no. A lot in my work, but not... Never punched one anyone out. Not yet. Never punched anyone tits in. No. <laughs> innocent. <laughs> Believe it or not. Have you ever called into work sick because you were hungover? Guilty. Even though I was the boss. <laughs> but, I mean, of course you've got to call in sick. You don't want to turn up to work and be hungover. That's kind of, that's inconsiderate, right? Have you? I can't answer that question. <laughs> I'm the one interrogating you here right now. You're not interrogating me. This is an easy one. Do you have any tattoos? <laughs> They're all real as well. I had, last week, uh, last week at the Laugh Hard um, uh, top, uh, top 10 night thing, we had a lot of went for people coming up saying, I didn't know you had that tattoo. I thought they drew the... the well, some said, I didn't know you had that tattoo. Others said, I thought they drew them on. No, they're all mine. They're all mine. Yes, they are yeah, all so yours. I've, I've got them. So, guilty. Have you ever been arrested? No. Oh. Oh, you sound so it's surprised. Because I look like I, I wanted to hear some no. big story. No. I was like, I no. All right, fine. Have you ever worked at a fast food restaurant? No. Damn, yeah. <laughs> well, ask me a decent question. Okay, here's a good one, here's a good one. Have you ever sent a text to the wrong person? No. What do you mean? I'm a nerd. Oh. I make sure I, 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 you know, I edit my texts and I go over them and... You do, and you like to pop some emojis in there. Yeah, totally. And no pictures, no naughty pictures to the wrong person either. Only oh. to the right people. Oh, okay. KB, check your phone. All right, I'll check my phone. Jail, bitch. <laughs> Have you ever injured yourself trying to impress someone? <laughs> <laughs> I have injured myself probably not trying to impress someone. I'm such a klutz. So, yeah, all the time. Constantly. Constantly. See have, that little spot there? That's what did you do? Injury. That's like a... That's like... Uh, no, it's a no, that's All right. <laughs> have you ever been totally freaked out by a fan? Mm, no. Not yet. They're all good? Yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> okay, here's one that Nicole De Silva uh -huh. was guilty of. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I think we are there was there was this there was different sides to each story. Okay. Have you ever regifted a gift? Are you a regifter? Do you know Miss Nicole de Silva gave me a few gifts and after I heard that I thought you <laughs> gifter. 
So I am not a regifter. <laughs> but after I found out she did, I was like, oh my God. So this was actually part of her... Um, you could, you, could be the recipient, you could be the recipient of a re-gift. I know a lot of people would probably say, oh my God, Nicole gave you a gift, please, please give it to me if you don't want it. But, you know, I've consumed it all. <laughs> As you do. Um, have, this is, this, is, this is relevant. Have you ever considered being on a reality series? Yes, totally. Totally. <laughs> You're not, not, not good at this, am I? Uh, yeah, absolutely. What one? Uh, Survivor. The same as Nicole. How's that? Okay. Totally. You could probably I've actually get applied that. for it. You, I applied for you it. You apply for the Australian season two. Are you serious? Yeah, I love it. I've watched it since the first season, of the American season, and that with Richard Hatch and and um, Kelly came second. Kelly Wep Kelly Wentworth came second. Get out. That was her name. And the Australia Australia did a, a season on Channel Seven, which tanked. And now Mr. Lapaglia did um, did um, did. Um, the new season, last season. Yeah. Time. Yeah, so survive, definitely. Cool. All the Real Housewives, like it just turn up and... <laughs> Maxine on a Real Housewives? No, socks is Melissa DeCouts' dance. <laughs> that was last episode, Back right? up dance. Why not? I know all the words to a song. Have you ever Beat fallen... Beat my lips. Okay. Do it. Beat my lips. <laughs> Have you ever fallen in love with someone who is no good for you? No. Oh. <gasps> Guilty, nah. he's going to get some mad, nah. juicy goss. Nah. All right. Have you ever Googled yourself? Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, you're not innocent. Guilty. guilty. I can't blame it. I should just say yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Guilty. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever lied about your age? Uh, I have. In the beginning. Not innocent. Oh, God. I was, uh, in the beginning, I did. Um, but now I don't, because most people don't believe I'm 42. <laughs> you do. You have a baby face. <laughs> yeah, so I don't You don't need to lie. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Here's a juicy one, and I okay. really want to have it to be. I don't want it to be oh, innocent. Gosh. I okay. want it to be guilty, and I want a full backstory. Oh gosh. Okay. Have you ever dated a castmate from Wentworth? From well, depends if you want me. To, <laughs> if you want me to pigeonhole you into that gap, well, or do I say I've certainly travelled the world with someone from Wentworth, and we've had a few dates around the world. I could train that. How does it count, Sauce? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I'm very professional when it comes to oh, my, my no, okay, work. Okay, not when we're ever. Oh, done. Ever. Oh, man. <laughs> Next game. I'm interrogating here. You can't start. Yeah, no, no. I'm going. sorry to disappoint you. No. Well, my, what, what, I what? wanted to. Emmanuel Biet. She's very hot. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'm fantasizing. Oh, look, she could be watching. You, you can mm. still pick up on it. No, she's in Russia right now. Oh, awful. Yeah, what am I talking about? This is going across the world. Awkward. Okay, <laughs> this is the part that everyone is excited for. They're like, Kelly shuts up and we throw to the fans. What do I do with this? You can just hold it. Just okay. play with it. Um, and it's live questions from your fans. So, oh. guys, 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 I'm going to try and get to as many questions as I can. Socrates is going to answer them as quickly as he can so that we can get to as many questions as we can. Don't write crap questions because I won't select them. You're talking too much, Kel. Okay. Okay. Patrick wants to know if Sox thinks Maxine is off somewhere now drinking Bundy in a hammock with friends. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully they'll do that for her in Barnhurst, but I think she's got to actually, you know, go, go, she's got she a few more, she, you know, it, it'll be a while before she, she manages to do that. I think she's got some hostile situations before she's uh, accepted. Unfortunately, good question. <laughs> Lindley Doherty wants to know, do you have a date? Do you need a date for the Logies? She's willing to be a red carpet date. Great. Okay. How do we hook that up? Kel? I don't know. I'll just Kel, text you later, Kel, Lindley. Kelly Davis. <laughs> That's not oh, Kelly Powell. <laughs> don't say my name. Oh, jail bitch. Hashtag. <laughs> Shit. Tom, Tom, help. Ah, can't flip that out. Okay. <laughs> Angie wants to know who you found the hardest to say goodbye to on set. Uh, on set was uh, Burns. Katrina Milosevic. Yes, Katrina Milosevic. And also turning around, I, I really wanted to say goodbye to B, uh, B's picture, which which you managed to do. Um, thank God Dan wasn't on set that day because I don't think I would have been able to do it. So, Kat. Sam Love wants to know what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you in public since starting on Wentworth? The weirdest thing? Uh, 
I think probably who's this? Sam. Um, sorry, Sam Love. Sam Love. Sam Love. I think the weirdest thing, it's kind of ironic, is that people recognise me, and I didn't think they would. But I was overseas uh, in some remote countries and people recognised me from my voice. And they kind of go, you're Maxine from Wentworth. I think that's the weirdest thing. I just didn't think I would be recognisable. Yeah, you know what, that's a, I think that's... I, I generally wouldn't recognise you. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, okay. <laughs> Great, <laughs> but weird. Okay, this is from Reese. What's your all-time favourite scene to shoot? Well, we kind of talked about that before. Yeah, it would, it would probably but, be the... Yeah. I, I love the shower scene in the beginning when I, when I when, uh, B was attacked and I punched the attacker and B saw me. That was the, one of the first scenes we did in season two. Actually, everything that happens in the shower is kind of good. I love bathing <laughs> Boo's hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, that most, pe so most people have... have Horrid, harrowed times in the shower scenes, but Maxie has some good stuff. You know, I bathed Boomer's hair, and you know, and um, yeah, I got the drugs off Tina when I was um, yeah, and Kim, yeah. So, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, probably when I was Top Dog. Top Dog was cool. Actually, that leads into another question. Kimberly wants to know: Do you enjoy the fighting scenes? No, Kim, hate them. Really? Yeah. Oh, I know where Maxie roughs people up. No, see, most people do that. I think it's because I don't. I didn't want to go there necessarily. I, you know, she she herself had a hard time sort of being the muscle because. It, it but goes... she's so sweet, and then she can just like rough someone. Well, up. yes, fair enough. But I think in the beginning, I sort of didn't want Maxie. Wow. Well, she didn't want to sort of be known of as the muscle primarily the muscle. because it's such a masculine trait. You know. I see. Mm. I I feel you. I feel mm -hmm. you, Maxie. Mm -hmm. Um, does someone? This is weird. I'm gonna. It's more weird with the names. Their names coming up as Searchy Joan. He's Searchy Joan. <laughs> He's Searchy Joan. Um, hi socks. Hello. Do you feel satisfied with Maxine's overall story arc? Is there anything else you wish Maxine could have done? Yeah, I do. To tell you the honest truth, I do. I think we were only touching the surface of of the cancer storyline, and like I said earlier, the aftermath of how she's going to deal with Pete, with B's death, um, but also, you know. The baby stuff wasn't resolved, and and just just how she's going to appropriate herself, appropriate her identity right now. I think I think there was a lot more to, to be seen. Tian, what is the favourite? Well, I'll reword it. Tian, what's the favourite place you've travelled to? Oh wow, Tian. Well, I wonder where you're from. Hmm. Um, I would probably say Portugal and uh, Istanbul. I lived um, in both for about. A month each, and they were stunning, stunning countries. I'd go back in a heartbeat. Samantha Campbell, who would you go out on a wild night with from the cast? I thought you were going to say from the Real Housewives of. Uh, oh, you can see it <laughs> From the cast? Oh, look, all of them, probably in, in, in different uh, situations. Dan Cormack is a riot, so is Kate Jenko. Um, I know I probably wouldn't go out with Kat because we're both sort of quiet people and we'd like a little sort of tea at home. <laughs> <laughs> a little fire going on, which is beautiful as well, you know. Um, but a wild night. Um, yeah, probably uh, probably Jenko and... Oh, look, I just saw Tammy's face in my brain. She loves dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, look, any of them. Any of them. Um, Kerry Murphy, if you could have any power in the world, what would it be and why? Um, I think, I think it would be to erase any type of, uh, hatred and bigotry and misogyny and transphobia and homophobia and just make people accept one another, you know, and, um, learn to love and appreciate people more. I really, I really believe that, especially now. You know what? Times. That's such a noble response. Mm -hmm. I would literally say that I would like to teleport so I could be anywhere I want when I want. I thought you were going to say I'd just like to be invisible so I can go in that shop and. Oh uh, no, invisible is yeah. no. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the, that's the first thing that came instinctively to my head. It's so, and, so, know, it's so noble, but it's so true. It's Whereas so I true. just want I would. a power of myself to teleport yeah. to wherever I want to go. Which is which is fine. Which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am for you. I am for you. <laughs> um, Joe Barker, what character in the history of all movies would you love to play? Oh dear. Uh, history of all movies. Uh, I don't know why. All of a sudden, John Malkovich and Dangerously Asians came came to mind. I, I loved that. Uh, 
his role growing up in that play, yeah, in that, well, it was a play, I mean, the, the movie, um, John Malkovich, <laughs> Dangerous Liaisons. Really? <laughs> okay. I learn something new every day. Yeah. Mel. Or Frankie Doyle. <laughs> I love Mel. Bridget Teal. Oh, no, I lost Mel. Oh, there Mel. Mel, what would you change about the Wentworth prison system if you could? The governor. The governor as the a old whole governor. or freak? The freak. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, what would I change about the, the Wentworth system? Quite a lot. I mean, look what goes down in that prison. It's pretty, yeah. Do you know? It's pretty cray. Oh, it's pretty cray cray. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Jamie Bell. Sorry. If you could Jamie play, Bell. Jamie Bell. Is that Billy Elliot? No, I thought it was like, because we were talking about my, Ring My Bell, so I thought you were going to sing oh. again, but you didn't. Anyway, moving right along. If you could have played another character in Wentworth, who would you and why? Uh, who would I and why? Um, oh, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. I'm pausing because it's tricky because every one of those characters, you kind of can't not associate the actors with them. Do you know? I see what you mean. And that's the thing. So I'm kind of going, oh wow, imagine playing Lizzie, but I just couldn't do anything that that Cyril does. You know, so it's. It's tricky. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's just really difficult. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Right. I can't answer the, moving on to the next question. <laughs> if you can't answer my questions, I own this interrogation room. Um, Jacob, who who pulls the most pranks on set? Robbie. For depths. Actually, I wouldn't mind playing Will Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Or good old Fletch. I would have liked to have oh, Fletch. Oh, Fletch is in. Yeah. Yeah. Fletch gets Fletch. pretty fucked up though, so. Yeah. You know, I wonder how he's on the farm right now. Yeah, everyone goes to that farm. It must be a pretty cool place. <laughs> um, Kirsten Dijon, if you could wow. date any. <laughs> Great, I hope I said it right, Kirsten <coughs> Dijon. If you could date any celebrity, who would it be? Melissa Counts. Oh, that's all clear. I thought you were going to say my name. Well, um, no, but you know, we're hand in hand anyway. <laughs> Um, so many questions, so many good questions. Hang on, is Melissa, Melissa married, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. You screwed. Um, she could be watching too. Um. Next question, quickly. I know, but the, you know what? There's so many good questions, I don't even know, Ooh. like, where to start. Um, 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 That one right there. If you were, if you were to give the Logies... Like win, acceptance speech for winning, what would it be? Oh wow! Um, wow! Uh, just, um, just, <laughs> no, it would be speechless. No, um, what a, what an, what an amazing gift to be recognised as part of this cast and part of this ensemble, you know, and and to have been appreciated. For so long, um, it's it's an ultimate gift, you know, for all of us. It is, you know. <laughs> Sorry, that's. I just kind it of, was, I just kind of imagined. It, it was a bit of on the spot question. I was kind of, it's a great question, do you know. But um, Vicky, hopefully, I'll be up there and I'll be able to do it, and, and I'll probably have it. Yeah, but I won't say what I said now. No, that was just that was the, um, what's it called? Kelly Lindsay? will write it out. Yeah, there. I'll do that. Um, Vicky, what's your biggest fear? Uh, my biggest fear, uh, pro probably, um, to lose sight of, of, um, love and lose sight of laughing, you know, and to, 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 to stop enjoying living. You know, I think that's that's a huge fear. You know, I look for I look for the simplest thing every day to actually keep me going. And when I do, I think, yeah, that's what life's about. You know, so my biggest fear is to lose that and to walk around just feeling completely empty. Oh, yeah. But you're always so happy. Yeah, well, well that's what I mean. That's why it's okay. my fear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking the questions. What is in your dream, woman? <laughs> what is the meaning behind your tattoos? That was from, I don't know who that's from, sorry. This one's a bonsai tree, and it was a tree of life that I got when I was about 18 years old, and I wanted to see something. It reflected how I viewed the world at the time and how I viewed um, 
uh, well, a lot of things, and it was both intricate and quite ominous. Um, these the branches kind of reflect arteries and barbed wire. Again, quite ominous and uh, quite intricate and quite beautiful if you see the details inside. But it's also a tree of life, so it's growing and growing, and it all represents a lot of the situations, a lot of the uh, places I've been to, and um, uh, things that I got involved in. Um, uh, and it's just growing, it's growing and growing and growing. So it's basically my tree of life. That one, tree anyway. of life. Yeah. You, are you going to show the girls like further up to how far it goes? That one. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> well, no, because then I'm going to have to tell you about this. Yeah, well, they want to know. No, no, it's, it, it, I'll, it, 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 we'll go on and on and on and we'll okay, get to the final 15. fine. Well, then again, I am interrogating you. You were meant to answer my questions or ask for some legal representation. Well, come over here and sit beside me so everyone can see you. <laughs> so now I need to see that. Um, this is a really quirky question, yep. Jeremy. Who's the most important person in your life? Myself. Does that sound, sound a bit selfish? No. It's true. It's true. If anything, if anything, uh, Maxine's taught me is that regardless of what the world throws at you, you've got to remember to love yourself because there's beauty in that, and you don't know just who you're touching. So I make sure that I'm the most important person in my life, and. That everything I do and everything I feel is right, and there's no conscience behind it, um, you know. And then I'm then I'm doing doing everything that that supports my heart and my my brain and just keeps me going, you know. So that's so lovely. It's like if you can't love yourself, then you can't love anyone else. Now, what's that from? Um, that's from my brain. No, I've heard it before. No, I made it up. It's a it, it's a quote. No, you can't love yourself. You can't love anyone. That's, that's from RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's from Kelly Brown. Okay. <laughs> you plagiarised all these questions. I own this. This happens on that other prison show, doesn't it? Now, sorry guys, we're, we're, we're going to have to wrap up. So we've got the final 15 because we're coming to the end of our lovely chat with Socks. So we've got a final 15. Okay. It's like, no, you don't need to listen to a fieldy. Because I'm not very good at that. You're not very good at don't that. Don't give me a prop, please. No props. Just, you know, whatever okay. the first thing that comes to your head is. Ready? Read my lips. Sydney or Melbourne? Say that again. <laughs> that was really quick. Send it's me on meant Melbourne. to be quick. Melbourne. Teal or orange? Teal. Beer or wine? Wine. Governor Ferguson or Governor Bennett? Governor Bennett, thank you very much. Phone call or text? Phone call. We're going to talk to people more. Stop sort of this text kind of not seeing each other. Phone, phone, phone. Facey or Insty? Insty. Passenger or driver? Well, I don't drive, so I'm a passenger. <laughs> Uber or taxi? Uber. TV or book? Books. Winter or summer? Winter. Heels or sneakers? <laughs> <laughs> and that's such a delightful response in your face asking me that question. Sneakers. <laughs> dine in or dine out? Oh, it depends who I'm with. You know, a bit of both. 50-50. Boomer or B? Oh, yeah, right. Like, I'm going to answer that. That's impossible. Excuse me. Left heart, boomer, right heart, B. This is an interrogation room. That's my answer. Okay. Fries or salad? Salad. Loud or quiet? Mm, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who I'm with. If I'm with my jail bitch and a crew, loud. But, you know, if I'm with myself and my book and, you know, and I'm calling someone using my phone and I'm in my sneakers, quiet. <laughs> with your wine? With my wine, totally. Well, in my teal. In your teal. And it's winter. And it's winter and you're in Melbourne. And I'm no, a passenger and I'm in Melbourne. Did you say Melbourne? No, Melbourne. Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne. Yeah. Well, Socrates. Oh, thanks, guys. How exciting. We were so excited to speak to you today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for... You're always such a gem. We always love having you. Thank you. Um, you guys are awesome. You should come and say hello. No, because I'm, I'm, I'm interrogating you. Just At the low heat. I'll get it. Um, so I guess the next thing is to keep everyone tuning in. Eight thirty Tuesdays totally. only on Showcase. Totally. Um, also, to you Kilt know, what we didn't talk about what? the Wentworth Rat. It's not me. It's not you. Do you have any idea who it is? No. But can I quickly say something? Well, it depends <laughs> if what you're going to say. <laughs> well, maybe no. Look, I, no, I don't know who the Wentworth Rat is. Can you give me a hint? 
Well, lots of people were suspecting that it was you because in some of the clips that the rat dropped, it was Maxi, clearly Maxi holding the phone. I thought you were going to say some of the droppings the rat dropped <laughs> were clearly Maxine's <laughs> droppings. I'm like, what did you see that I didn't see? Um, that too. No, I'm so not the rat. I'm so not the rat. But no, we need some insider goss. Like this rat oh. knows some like knows some. Do you want me to lag? Lag or lie? Because I've got, I'm clueless. No idea. Oh, so you're not going to lag on anyone? No, because I don't know who the, No, because I don't well, know who I was just hoping to get some. I was just hoping to get some inside information out of you before we went. So no one knows who the bat is. Not happening, woman. I really don't think this interrogation went really well. <laughs> did it? Really? <laughs> I think my questioning didn't really no, the two, scratch yeah. that. So we but, shouldn't stick to any scripts, I reckon. <laughs> Thank you so much, Socks. Um, everybody make sure you head to Socrates' um, Instagram and Twitter pages because we want to also quickly talk about... A lot of people in the last three years have talked asked me about acting and how to get into acting and what I've done with a good friend of mine Annie Finster is that in about four weeks we're launching our own acting school in Sydney so it's called the Green Room Experience and if you hit the greenroomexperience.net you'll get all the information you need we're launching in about four weeks so um, stay glued to Sox's Insta and Twitter I mean I know you already do you've got such a good following on there and um, Sox is always a friend of, of, of Fox telling you'll be seeing a lot more and I'll see you at the Logies Thanks, See guys. you, everyone. Thank you for everything.